Hey, it's Joe Glines. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can um, change the property you're getting by using a variable. Um, I'll, I might also demonstrate how you can throw it into function, which is really, to me, why I would do this. Uh, so in this example here, I use my little IWP2 learner tool to come down here and on my page get my, um, so I'm getting it by ID, right? So it's get element by ID. And I put, of course, site description, right? Because that's what this ID was. And I'm going to save this and reload the script and run it. And you'll see the first time it gets the inner text, the second time it gets the outer HTML, and the third time it gets the inner HTML, um, which I'm not going to go into all that. But uh, basically, let's say you kept wanting to change this. And this doesn't have a value, but I could easily have value here. Um, it would return, I think it returns a zero. Let me see. No, oh, okay, because there is no value, right? So it actually will error when it when you try to do that. So I put that back in there. Um, but my challenge was I wanted to inside a function, but for this example, it's just simpler to keep it straightforward. Let's say I want to change, I want to say property equals. I want to I want to save a variable titled um, named property, and I wanted to put that here, right? Well. When you try and put property here, I'll comment out these for now, it um it's gonna error out. And I tried a lot of different things of well, what if I put it, you know, this way? Um, and none of these things worked. Um, and so I was talking with the author of Auto Hockey Studio, Matrioth, and he showed me how he solved this a long time ago. Um, and it, it's not straightforward of like what you'd have to do. Basically, what you have to do is first create um, a variable that leads up to it. And so we'll call this um, ID var. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, of course. And we're going to get rid of that. And then you can say, this is box ID var, and wrap this with brackets and put in your variable. So property. So I'm going to save this, reload it, and launch it, and see it gets it, right? So now that will work, and that means, of course, I could change this to outer HTML. Now that has to be precise, right? Because it's literally passing this to the end of this command. It's just broken over two lines. Now this, of course, um, to me isn't that helpful, but hey, what if I put that into a function, right? So let's say um, this was actually a function. We'll call it get ID, and I'm going to have to pass it a pointer to the handle because the handle's outside, so that'll be my um, parameter for the pointer. And then um, I, I could, yeah, let's pass it the ID uh, because that would change, of course, and then I want the property, right? And now I, I need to turn this thing into a function. Where's my other curly brace? And let's see, so I got that there. I need to change this. So this will be the, the parameter of ID, right? I'm going to dynamically be passing that to it. And then um, I use that for property. This, uh, I need to change my pointer to be using the, the one that gets passed to it. Um, and let's see, I think we're good. Now I'm going to call the function. So what I typically do is just borrow from this, put it here and go out and swap out what I want. So ID, oh darn, all right, it's still right here, is gonna be this. And and this, of course, is actually what's above is PWB. So let's see that, and I'm passing property here. You know what, I'm, let's just simplify it. Instead of passing the variable, I'm gonna pass that there. Now let's save this, reload it, launch, and there we go. So I can um, in this call, I could easily swap out now. I can swap out the ID. I could swap out this with um, with that. And um, easily, you know, grab different things. Um, to take this to the fullest extent, this is, this is where I was going with it. Let me um, scroll down here. Da, da, da. So this is what, and um, let me bring it. I'm going to copy it and paste it up above here. Um, this is what I ended up doing with it. It was just too complicated to me. I didn't want to confuse anyone with uh, with doing it this way. But what I'm doing is I've, I'm passing 
the um, the uh, pointer to the uh, the page to get a handle to the IE existence. I pass what I want, which is class or ID or um, so I created an ob um, a methods object in here so I can get ID, I can get class, I can get tag, I can get name. Um, and when I pass any of those things, which to me are intuitive that I can remember that, it will dynamically swap out the get elements by ID or get elements by class name or by tag name. Um, and then for ID, because ID is not plural, uh, I had and, and it would have a an array, right? So when it's when it's ID, it's going to do this one, right? So this is when it's not ID, it'll do the first one. Otherwise, it'll do this one. Uh, but this allows me now, or and and I also put in here for the um, so these are the the first one are the methods, right? These are the methods that you can use, and then these are the properties that you can get. I'm sure there are more. However, now I can just type um, very straightforward to me in my head. I can remember class and ID and tag and, and name, right? And I can pass the um, the thing I'm trying to get. And then this is for the index. So if it's a, an array, you need to tell it which one to get. If not, it, you can leave it blank because I've set it to, to be default um, the default of nothing. Um, and then I created little abbreviations for each one. So there's inner text, outer text, inner HTML, outer HTML, value, selected index, and checked index. These are for radio and check boxes. Uh, so, so now I have this that I can use in anything and easily pass stuff to it and return it back. It's, it's to get stuff. It's not to set things. Um, my brain wasn't fast enough this morning to have figured out how I could have made this a little bit fancier and passed in, you know, either get or set. Um, because the set, of course, I'm going to have to pass a value to it also. So I'd probably just make it a separate one for that. Uh, anyway, I hope that helps. It, it's um, this general approach. Again, uh, Maestri has solved it for me, but it, I think it's really awesome because any com object, right, you can now break it down and pass a variable and make it much more dynamic, right? So in, in mine, I'm passing it as a parameter into inside a function. Uh, just a quick, easy way. Let me see if this will run. I, I, I ran it on my site earlier. Oh, 103. What is 103? Let me just... Oh, because I defined it. I, I copied it and pasted it. I shouldn't have done that. All right, let's delete it from there. All right. So I'll come back up here. I'm going to run it. And so this is on the first one. I'm getting the class widget tag cloud. Um, it's the first one because it's a, a class and that's an array. And I'm getting the inner text. But what if I change this to outer HTML, right? I'm going to say reload it. Now it gets the HTML. Um, or if I got the... Um, inner HTML, right? So I can very easily swap out what I'm trying to get um, just by changing a couple things, or I could I could change the, this is for class. Of course, that's the other thing that always confused me is when you're when you're doing, using this tool on your web page, and let's see if I can grab that um, class with the tag cloud here to, to give a good example here. So see how it says class here? In your code, in the HTML on the page, it'll say class. However, when you call it in AutoHotKey, it's class name. And so that always, it was just one of those things until I got used to it, it confused me. But doing it this way, I can say just class, and I don't have to remember that um, little divergence. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. And thank you.